Hello, uh, in this video we're going to talk about determining limits and we're going to do this one uh, graphically. Now there's actually two ways we're going to learn how to do limits. One is graphically, the other one is analytically. Graphically is actually the easier one. Analytically, uh, we're going to have, those can get a lot harder because we're going to have to do a lot of things like factoring and trig identities, things that people don't like too much. Uh, but I think the graphically one is more straightforward. Uh, so let's take a look at a graph and we'll find the limits that way. All right, let's start with an easy one. We have the limit of f of x. Now this is f of x. I'm not telling you what f of x is, uh, but it really doesn't matter because we have the graph of it. Uh, the limit of f of x as x approaches three. So again, what am I actually looking for? What would I expect the y value to be as x approaches three? So let's go ahead and jump on this graph and here's three. So let's go ahead and approach three. So I'm coming in from the left and I look like I'm right there coming in from the right. Again, I'm, it looks like I'm approaching the exact same spot. Now, what would that Y value be if there was a point there? And it looks like it would be four. So the limit of this function as X approaches three is four because that's what I would expect the Y value to be if I actually had a point there. But in the last video, I did mention that limits don't actually care what the y value is at that point. Just again, what would you expect it to be if you were to keep getting closer and closer to three? Now, let's take a look at this piecewise graph right here. Uh, it is made up of three pieces. So we got uh, this straight line, this parabola, and this looks like a square root function. And we have the question, what is the limit of f of x? Again, this whole thing is f of x. As x approaches negative 1. Let's go ahead and find negative 1. Looks like it's right there. Let's do the same thing we did in the last example. Let's jump on the graph. Let's approach negative 1 from both the left, which looks like I'm going right there, and coming in from the right. Again, looks like I'm going to that same y value, and it appears that y value is 2. So. What's the limit as x approaches negative 1? It appears to be 2. Pretty simple. Now let's go ahead and do the next one. What is the limit of f of x as x approaches 1? So here's 1. Let's approach it from the left-hand side. So it looks like I'm going right there. So it does look like I'm approaching 2. Uh, but if I'm coming in from the right, it looks like I'm approaching a different y value. This is the y value. Uh, zero. So we have a bit of a problem. We have a conflict here. Coming in from the left, I'm approaching a y value that is different than if I was I was coming in from the right. Now, there's going to be three or two, basically two different types of limits. Uh, we have general and one-sided limits. Now, when you all of the examples we've done so far have been general limits. That's why I've been coming in from both the left and the right. One-sided limits would be, as the name says, it's coming in from one side. So we have a general limit. X is approaching one. From the left and right, I'm approaching two different Y values. So what I would say is that this limit does not exist. Because when I come in from both sides, I'm not approaching the same Y value. So how can we remedy this problem? Uh, that's where one-sided limits come in. Let's talk about the left-hand limit. Now, the way that this notation works is it's very similar. You have the limit of your function, and x approaches 1. Okay, but we have this little addition right here. Uh, it is a left-hand limit, and when those left-hand limits have this minus sign, kind of as an exponent to the 1, uh, but what that stands for is the left-hand limit. And then we have the right-hand limit which is very similar again. You have the limit of your function as x approaches 1. Uh, but to make sure that it is a, you know that it's a right-hand limit, we have a positive sign. Now let's just, why positive and negative? If you were to look at the number 1 right here, if you were to approach it from the left, you're approaching it from the negative side, right? These are all the negatives. So coming in from the left means you came from the negative side. When you're approaching one from the right, well, here's one, and coming in from the right, where did you come from? The positive sides. 
So that's why we use the positive and negatives. So now let's answer the one hand one sided limit question. What is the limit as x approaches 1 from the left? Well, coming in from the left, approaching 1, I said the y value, I expected it to be 2, so my limit is 2. If I'm coming in from the right and I'm approaching 1, I expected the y value to be 0, so the limit would be 0. Okay, on to our next example. We have this piecewise graph right here. Let's go through all the different limits. Notice I did throw in some left-hand limits, some right-hand limits, some general limits. Uh, when you don't see a direction, a plus or a, yeah, plus or a minus sign, then it's called a general limit. So let's go ahead and do these pretty quickly. Uh, you're approaching two from the left. Okay, so here's two. Approaching it from the left, it looks like that y value would have been one. So one. What's it when I approach two from the right? All right, so I'm approaching two from the right. Oh, looks like I would have been one again. Now onto the general limit. If I was approaching two and without a direction, it means from both the left and right. So I actually have to come in from the left and the right. Now I already did these and I, both, I found them both to be one. So the general limit is also one. So now let's approach one. All right, notice that there is no direction sign on this, which means I have to go from the left and the right. So if I'm approaching one, so there's one, from the left, it looks like I would have had a y value of zero. And you approach it from the right, also a y value of zero. So since they match, it equals zero. Now what about the limit as x approaches zero? Okay, there's zero. All right, if I'm approaching it from the left, looks like it would have been one. Approach it from the right, also one. So pretty simple, the limit's one. Now how about negative one from the left? All right, so I'm approaching negative one from the left, which means I'm coming up here, because there's negative one. And it looks like that y value would have been, well, one, two, three. Looks like it would have been three. All right, negative one from the right. So I'm approaching negative one from the right, and it looks like the y value would have been right here, which is two. And finally, the limit as x approach negative one, notice that there is no direction sign on it. So that means from both the left and right. Well, I already ju I just found out that the left was three and the right was two. And so this limit doesn't exist because the left and rights don't match. And we use this shortcut DNE for does not exist. Now at this point, I want you to try the following example I have up on the screen. And for the solution to this suggested problem and more information about NIU, please visit the link down below.